from San Diego, this is the 1987 Miller APBA Gold Cup. Brought to you by Miller Beer, made the American way. It would be difficult to find a more enjoyable climate than the one found in San Diego. People come from everywhere to enjoy the weather, the water, the style of living here in Southern California. Hi everybody, I'm Don Poyer, and welcome to the 80th running of the APBA Gold Cup. This is the season's pinnacle event, but more importantly, a record which has stood for over 60 years could be broken today. Driver Chip Hanauer out of Seattle, Washington, could win his sixth consecutive Gold Cup. The string began back in 1982 in the Motor City, then to Evansville, Indiana, Tri-Cities, Washington, his hometown of Seattle, and then back to Detroit last year. But Chip has an incredible challenge ahead of him. His hydroplane is powered by a turbine engine. History of turbine engines is not good on saltwater courses, which is the case here on Mission Bay. Secondly, the 1987 circuit has been dominated by another driver, Jim Kropfeld in the Miss Budweiser. He has won five of seven races so far this year. He started 1987 winning the first three. He would have won in Detroit, but jumped the gun in the final heat. Scott Pierce got the victory. He took two races in the state of Washington, and then bad weather prevented any official racing in Syracuse. Can Hanauer overcome the obstacles ahead of him? Steve Montgomery, who will be co-announcing this race with me, is with Chip right now. Don, for Chip Hanauer and the Miller American crew, number six looked like an impossible dream just a few weeks ago. But Chip, the guys in red and white have really put it together for you, maybe just in time, huh? The last 48 hours have been a big change for this year. This year has been horrible. We've had no glimmers of hope. Back in my mind, I knew we had the sixth Gold Cup coming up towards the end of the year, and it really looked hopeless. Last 48 hours, uh, all of a sudden the performance has turned around. We've set the fastest lap in the history of the sport, and uh, that's enough to kind of get everybody motivated again. Who are Stewart and Stevenson, and what have they done for you? Stewart and Stevenson are a turbine generator company in Houston, Texas. They have been watching the races on television, said they could help, and we got in touch. They got in touch with us. Uh, we took our engines to Houston and ran at their facility. Is there more pressure on Chip Hanauer in a Gold Cup than the other drivers here? Well, there probably is because I'm the only one that's been in this situation of having the opportunity to win six straight Gold Cups. Um, I'm trying to deny the pressure. Um, I'm not going to hinge my career or this season on one race. I think that's a dangerous thing to do. I think we've lost drivers. I think Bill Muncie felt that if he won that world championship race in Houston, Texas in 81, that he would have saved an otherwise very unsuccessful year. And I think he drove the boat beyond the limits to do that. Hopefully I've learned a lesson from that and uh, I don't want to do it. At the other end of the pit area, Don Poyer is with a man who'd like to break the string, Jim Kropfeld. The man next to me might be the hungriest driver in the pits right now. The Budweiser driver, Jim Kropfeld, you have never won a Gold Cup. It's about the only thing that has escaped you. Well, that's one of the few things. Uh, I guess it is about the only thing. I think I finally won on every race course on the circuit now. And uh, the Gold Cup, this will be my sixth try, or my fifth try, I'm sorry. And uh, we had a couple heats. We were, a couple races, we were out in front, and we broke down. And, uh, and a couple of them, I really got beat by Chip, so... Uh, I don't know what, yeah, we're gonna, it's gonna be another battle. We're both running about even again here. Okay, well, good luck today. We need it, thank you. <laughs> we have a busy day ahead of us. Ten to the five. Heat 1A is next. The will to win, to be clearly better than anyone else, to be the best. It's what drives men to race and Miller to make beer. Beer brewed darker with a special roasted malt for richness you can see, quality you can taste. Being the best you can be, that's the American way. Miller's made the American way. Mission Bay, San Diego, California, the 80th running of the Gold Cup. And Steve, let's look at the field for today. Here are the boats that will be raced and the men driving them. First of all, the Pepsi America's Choice and Mitch Evans from Lake Chelan, Washington. A Seattle boat. This is the Jackpot Food Mart Garrett Turbo Special. Jerry Hoff, a young man from Snohomish, just north of Seattle, Washington. 
Next up from the Los Angeles area, the U-80 sponsored by the Bahia Resort, Ron Armstrong and Bob Patterson, the owner of this boat, qualifying at almost 120. This is Todd Yarling, a fourth-year driver from Hanover, Indiana, the household finance company boat owned by Jim and Nancy Saddam, Mr. Consistency. Next, Scotty Pierce, first year of the Mr. Pringles program with the turbine power, qualifying at over 123, Scott out of Seattle. The Frank Kenny Toyota Volvo team based in Seattle has a new driver, Jack Schaefer. He's a veteran and another second-generation driver. Ron Snyder out of the state of Ohio. Boy, does he get a ride in this boat. The wholesome Miss Madison, and he is one of the finest drivers around. Qualifying just over 126. George Woods has to be one of the favorites in a very fast piston-powered boat. A former Atlas Van Lines and Squire Shop, George in his rookie year. Here is the defending national champion and the current point leader, Jim Kropfeld on the Miss Budweiser. Jim out of Cincinnati, Ohio. And could it be that Chip Hanauer and the Miller American crew have put it together just in time after a miserable year? They qualify at 149.3 miles per hour. The format for the Gold Cup is really quite simple. First of all, all the boats will compete in three preliminary heats. Then, of the ten-boat field, the top six point-getters go into the winner-take-all final. Each preliminary heat is broken into two fields, five boats each, and here is the rundown for Heat 1A. As you see, Evans, Hop, Yarling and Company. To summarize this first heat, it was all Miller American. Chip Hanauer out of Seattle, Washington, trying to extend, of course, his string of Gold Cup victories, came in with 400 points. Coming in second place out of Lake Chelan, Washington, was Mitch Evans, driving the Pepsi America's Choice, owned by Ed Cooper, out of Madison, Indiana. Of the five boats, only two finished. Garling and Hop failing to finish. Scott Pierce did not start. Let's go down to the pits and talk to the winner. Chip, good start to a long day. Yeah, it's, uh, it's how we're after you at this, is just one step at a time. And uh, worry about the next heat now and put the final off till we get there. Whenever you were near traffic, you stayed way outside. You stay out of trouble. You saw that, huh? Yeah. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of salt water up in the air. You know, these boats throw a lot of water up there, and not only do they throw a lot of water up there, it stays suspended up there for a long time. So you really have to go a long way out of your way to stay out of it. One down, three to go. Yeah, just take uh, the other one as it comes, and we're just going to take it one step at a time. In the second flight of Heat One, that being one B, the second five boats. Ron Armstrong, Schaefer, Snyder, Woods, and Kropfeld. It was Snyder and George Woods out front at the start of Heat 1B. For some reason, the Budweiser and Jim Kropfeld way back in fourth place. And that was where he eventually finished. It was George Woods out of Seattle driving for Jim Harvard, the boat owner, out in first place with Jack Schaefer in second place and Ron Snyder in third throughout much of the heat. Finally, averaging better than 121 miles per hour, George Woods got first place in heat, 1B, second place to Jack Schaefer, and third to Ron Snyder. Also coming in, in fifth place, the U-80 and Ron Armstrong with a lot of damage. And speaking of damage, the Budweiser did get fourth place, but it caught fire on its way back to the pits. Evidently, some type of material went in the intake, got in near the gearbox, and the gearbox overheated, causing the fire. Crop fell uninjured, but the boat badly damaged, and we'll see if they can get in for the rest of the day. Here are the points for Heat 1B. Now, down to the pits. Were you surprised at such an easy one with uh, the beer boat in it? Oh, yes, I was, Steve. I expected them to come by about any time, so I kept looking over my shoulders and kept hoping that he wasn't coming, and uh, nobody caught me there at the end, so we're real happy with our first heat. The start went just the way you wanted it to. Yep, we were right up there in front, clicked the clocks uh, nice and clean down into the first turn, and just just had an easy run, this, the first one today. On to the Gold Cup. On to the Gold Cup. We got 45 more miles to race. There's a lot of racing left today. And the Budweiser is in a different kind of race, against the clock. They must assess the damage and try to get it ready for the next flight of heats. Back in a minute. Welcome back to the Gold Cup. This is the Bahia. Suffered a lot of damage. This boat won the race here in San Diego last year. Ron Armstrong, the driver, actually tried to douse the water on the bud during that fire recently. Quite a move by Ron. Ron, I understand you were trying to go by the Budweiser 
shooting spray up into the air, hopefully dousing the flames on the bud. Yeah, when I saw him burning there, first time, my first thought was to get out of the way so patrol boats could get to him, but I didn't see anybody on their way, so I thought, well, I'll run in and, you know, try to do the best I can with the rooster tail. It would wake another lap, but I, you know, try to do another circle rounding, but I knew we had so much damage, I didn't want to risk, you know, sinking ourselves. Certainly good sportsmanship. Now, the damage on your boat, you got a mighty big hole up on the front. Yeah, it doesn't look good at all. I'm, you know, a bit worried about it because I, I don't know even right now which heat we're in, but I know they got to work fast. Can you go without a wing? Well, yeah, the wing was okay. It just, you know, if it sits in the water, it'll sink. So, you know, like if anything was a break and I was to sit there, it'd go to the bottom again. We're not ready for that. And yet I know you would like nothing better than to get your second straight uh, victory here in San Diego. Oh, yeah. doesn't look real great at the moment, but if we can get in, we'll try. Bob Patterson, the owner of the boat, now trying to put some sheet metal up there. They will be in E2B, so they've got a little bit of time on their side. In the meantime, here are the boats heading out for Heat 2A. And here are the men that will be driving them in 2A. Chip Hanauer, of course, we've talked a great deal about him already. Also, Jack Schaefer Jr., his father, very well known in this sport at one time. Mitch Evans runs a marina up in central, north central Washington state, driving for Ed Cooper. Todd Yarling driving for the Jim Saddam team out of Hanover, Indiana. And Scott Pierce from Seattle driving for the Mr. Pringles team, a company based out of Cincinnati. Once again, five boats in Heat 2A, including Chip Hanauer, Scott Pierce, America's Choice, that being Mitch Evans. And the boat's a little bit late coming up for the start, Steve. And on the way outside, it looked like Hanauer might be in trouble as you see Jack Schaefer for the start. Right on the button, along with Todd Yarling. Yeah! Chip Hanauer is down as Scott Pierce goes by. Chip will be very glad now that he has those 400 points, Don. This does not mean the end of his day, but he's going to have to score some points later. And look at Jack Schaefer on the inside running beautifully. That's the biggest, heaviest boat that Jack has driven, and he's doing a great job. So in first place, Jack Schaefer, sponsored by Kenny Toyota, the dealership out of Seattle, in a Griffin-powered bow. We'll talk about it more as the day goes on. You saw Todd Yarling out of HFC, and they are in second place. Scott Pierce with the Mr. Pringles, another turbine-powered boat. As you see them, the piston-engine-powered boat of the Kenny Toyota, and Jack Schaefer out of nearby Irvine, California. When you look at this shot of this boat, Don, the big bunch of plumbing behind the engine is the turbocharger, one of the most unique turbocharger applications you'll ever see in any kind of racing. They can run about as many as they want, and there's Chip Hanauer, who would like very much to be out there scoring some points, but his day is not over. He's in a rather awkward position on the main straightaway. There he is as Scott Pierce goes by rather close. They'll have to have the fans keep him from going ashore, I would imagine, as Schaefer goes by in first place. Jack, an outstanding driver. We've seen him in the past. He has had victories in the past and is one of the more experienced drivers, really, in limited hydroplane racing. But you notice in that shot we just saw, and the next time he comes around, Jack is hooking that big boat a little bit coming out of the turns, which is costing him some speed. He does not have a lot of time in this particular hall as Scott Pierce comes by in the Mr. Pringles, and that turbine does not sound just right. Here comes Schaefer. There it is. That's the hook that you were talking about. That's a very good point, Steve. And this boat, really a whole new program, an entirely new idea going with the turbocharged Griffin. The Budweiser team years ago had a Griffin engine, but boy, they were the loudest in the world, a beautiful engine. This is a whole new idea of trying to get even more horsepower out of these huge, huge machines. As you see, Todd Yarling, second place. Now that engine is turbocharged, but you see the turbocharger on top of the engine, not nearly as big and dramatic as the one behind Jack Schaefer, which might be part of the problem swinging the back of that boat out. There is Scott Pierce, and that turbine is apparently going to succumb to salt problems. Now that turbine, <laughs> that's a marine turbine too, which is supposed to battle the salt. This is Mitch Evans, sponsored by Pepsi America's Choice. He's out of Lake Chelan, Washington, and is one of the up-and-coming youngsters in the sport. His dad, Norm Evans, drove years ago, and Jack Schaefer, his father, also an institution in this sport many, many years ago. Jack Schaefer Sr., Todd Yarling out of Hanover, Indiana, driving for Jim Saddam out of Madison, Indiana. And again, back to first place, Jack Schaefer Jr. One of the advantages Jack has right here, he has tremendous power coming out of that big Griffin engine, but his boat probably weighs 1,500 to 2,000 pounds more than the one right behind him, and he's able to stay on it just a little bit longer. A little more boat weight to keep him on the water. As you can see, some of the fans and security have had to come out and hold on to the boat. He's right in front of part of this crowd, which is numbering over 100,000, we're told, by the police. We thought it'd be about 70,000, but my goodness, biggest crowd they've ever had as Jack Schaefer puts on the show. Hanauer simply waits and watch second place Todd Yarling coming down the main straightaway. 
Interesting right there. Every time you see a driver come by Chip, you'll see the head turn. It's uh, something to see when you're coming by Chip Hanauer. You don't see him sitting still very often. Here again, Jack Schaefer leading in, uh, as we said before, the biggest, strongest boat he's ever driven, and he's doing a great job. That used to be the Budweiser up until the end of 1985. They used it briefly in that particular season, but it was some kind of winning boat. Over 20 victories for that boat. This boat was born in 1984, built by John Stoddicker out of Detroit. And this one by the one and only, that being Chuck Hickling out of Seattle here, is Leif Borgeson, the team manager for Jack Schaefer's boat, who's driving right there in the Kenny Toyota. The entire team based out of Seattle as they come down the straightaway. He'll have 400 points here, Steve, if he finishes, and he will. The Winner here in Heat 2A, Jack Schaefer. Second place, Todd Yarling. So the numbers read like this. Kenny Toyota, that being Jack Schaefer, with 400 in good shape for the final. Then comes Todd Yarling, Mitch Evans, and more struggling on the part of Scott Pierce. And, of course, the Miller American with Chip Hanauer unable to start. Let's go down to the pits. Seven hundred points. Would you have predicted that at this point? Well, I'd rather have eight, but I'll <laughs> settle for seven. You like the Southern California racing, huh? Close to home. Oh yeah, it's close to home. This is such a delightful place. You know, it's a neat race course. It's fast. It's got nice turns, shallow beaches. The weather's good. What more can you ask for? Everything the way you thought it would be, except you thought Chip would be there. Yeah, I, I kept looking around. I couldn't figure out where he was. I kept looking back, and he was nowhere. I thought, well, doesn't bother me. <laughs> You're the favorite right now to win the Gold Cup, right? Well, I'm not going to say that, but it sure wouldn't bother me. It'd be a lot of fun. You too. Nice score, partner. Good second place. It looks like uh, Salt is doing its thing again. Yeah, it looks like it. Uh, you know, we, we knew we had a good thing going here, but that at first he just didn't work. This one's working good, and we're going to be there in the final. In other words, you switched engines, but now you have 300 points. Get it 300, maybe uh, 225. That should get you into the final. Yeah, it should. That's what we're looking at. You know, this is a gold cup. You never give up till the final, because <laughs> anything can happen here. Okay, nice going. Thanks. That seems to be the theme with the Budweiser camp. Never give up. It looks like they're going to be in Heat 2B. Ed Nelson, one of the crew members, they're still ripping damage off of that cowling. Let's talk with Jim Kropfeld. Jim, are they going to make it? it looks, yeah, it's a tough question. I think so. The guys have worked their tails off here. Uh, everybody's been helping us. A bunch of the guys from the other crews have been over, so looking pretty good. Was the wiring gone at all, or were they able to replace what was damaged? Uh, I don't know. Everything's been replaced. We have all electrical circuits working, but uh, they didn't have time to test the engine. And okay. I guess the only big problem we got, we don't have any more baffles inside the engine cowling, so uh, maybe the salt water will get us. Uh, it's hard to say. But they work on. There's even Bernie Little, the boat owner, working on it. We'll have E2B right after this. Crowd estimates on this lovely day on Mission Bay in San Diego up around 100,000. They were expecting about 70, so it's been a great, great, pleasant surprise for everyone here. Out go the boats. There's the Bahia with no tail and a patched up job on that nose and you see the Budweiser. Let's go back about five months. The debut of the Budweiser when it suddenly blew over while testing on Lake Washington. Amazing how far this boat has gone in the last five months, winning five of seven races in 87. And now today, in San Diego, Cropfield goes after the trophy he's never pocketed, the Gold Cup. Here are the drivers now in Heat 2B. First of all, George Woods, driving for Jim Harvey, the Oboy Alberto, based in Seattle. Ron Snyder, driving the Miss Madison, owned by the community of Madison, Indiana. From Cincinnati he came, that's Jim Cropfield, driver of the Miss Budweiser, National Point's leader. Ron Armstrong, out of the Southern California area, driving Bob Patterson's boat, the Miss Bahia. Finally, Jerry Hopp, driving the Garrett Turbo, based out of Snohomish, Washington, north of Seattle. As you see the rundown in E2B, Jim Cropfeld and the Budweiser team definitely needing more points, with only 165 so far. They gotta make the final. Normally, this would be our final preliminary heat, but in the Gold Cup, you go an extra flight. We'll have heats 3A and 3B yet before we go to the final. Here comes the start. Amazing that the Budweiser is even here for this second heat, but here it comes, right on the button for the start. Jim Cropfeld not taking any chances. That fourth place finish, not enough points, Don. He needs to be scoring three or 400 per heat. 
to make the final and have a shot at the Gold Cup. He wired that start. He actually took a chance on being over the line. He simply, it's incredible that they're even here after all the damage. You saw it, Steve. We were there. All the damage to the engine, to the cowling, to the inside. You can't see the burn marks from here, but it's uh, absolutely incredible they're here. Second place at this point is Ron Snyder out of the state of Ohio, driven that boat many years. There goes George Woods into second place. Check that. He's moving into third place now. Woods aboard the Oboy Alberto, a team based out of Seattle, as is the Budweiser. The thing that saved the Budweiser team, Don, is a rather unique application. They have the turbine, the gearbox, and most of the moving parts sitting in a big rack under that cowling. When they lifted that out, almost all of the burn damage went with it, and that's the only reason they're here right now. Plus, they had a replacement for a wing, and they were able to race. Ron Snyder holding on to second, and here comes George Woods giving chase. Jim Harvey, the owner of that boat out of Seattle. He was a longtime crew chief, very successful, and now has stepped up the ladder to be an owner. Again, the Budweiser in first. There's Jerry Hopp out of Seattle in the Garrett Turbo. Again, the Budweiser. It's amazing, though, that this boat didn't suffer more wire damage in that fire, Steve. It is totally amazing that it's out here. The crew did a tremendous job of putting that thing back together. The damage was significant, and uh, you can rest assured there's some nervous men in red and white on the beach right now. There they are, fingers crossed, fingernails bitten, just hoping it stays together. Man on the left of the screen, that was Butch Cropfell. That's Jim's brother. Jim, uh, many times voted into APBA Hall of Champions, a great limited driver, Grand Prix driver. He has competed in virtually every class in hydroplane racing, Steve. And, of course, he's one of the best here in the Unlimiteds. Now as the Budweiser comes by us, you see the door is missing from the opening in the cowling. It was lost during the fire, but the engine sounds fine, Don. None of that compressor is stalling yet as it comes by us. And every time we see Ron Snyder like that, we think of the good old days as he's rocking and rolling in that cockpit, moving around. He's got belts strapping him in, as you see Ron again out of Ohio. But boy, that is the roughest ride in unlimited hydroplane racing, sitting behind that engine as he holds on in this particular heat. Budweiser in first place, trying to pick up 400 points after getting fourth place points in an earlier heat. There's your battle for third and second place. On the right is Ron Snyder in second, third place to Woods on the inside. George Woods and the old boy Alberto still one of the favorites on the day with that piston engine, but this boat right here along with Chip Hanauer, if they run like this, the piston boats are not going to catch them. Boat on the right used to be driven by Chip Hanauer. He was the Atlas Van Lines, and now, of course, belonging to Jim Harvey. But right now, that's the battle between second and third. Budweiser will pick up the first place, another 400 for Jim Krotfeld. But the race for second place, let's see who will pick it up. Looks like it'll be Woods on the inside, and the O'Boy Alberta with Ron Snyder on the outside, picking up 225. And again, Don, as the Budweiser came by us, it sounded fine. No problem so far in the turbine section. Again, the battle. Look where Snyder is. He's on the way outside. Instead of getting up in there and trying to hug, Woods going into that turn, making him stay in that lane. Woods in great position. The shortest route around the course, obviously, is from pin to pin. And he's holding on to lane number one. Woods, a five-liter driver, also a K-boat driver. He is a rookie in 1987 in the Unlimited. As he moves past one of the slower boats, still in second place in the Budweiser, comfortably in first. Credit this one to the Budweiser crew, Don. A tremendous job of bringing this boat back from a pile of ashes. Last time down the main straightaway at 400 points await the Budweiser and Jim Krafeld out of Cincinnati. Second place and 300 points to George Woods out of Seattle. And third place, Ron Snyder and the Miss Madison 225. So about an hour ago, things weren't looking so good for the Budweiser, but somehow they come up with the repairs in time. They get the badly needed points. They are well on their way towards the final. Likewise for the Oboy Alberto, on down to the host of Miss Madison and Ron Snyder, and the Garrett Turbo with Jerry Hopp. Down to the pits. A sigh of relief. Oh, yeah, boy, I tell you, Budweiser team really went to work that time. I've never seen those guys work that hard, but, uh, you know, I went out there and caused a little problems at first. Eight, and, uh, I didn't think they would do it, but by gosh... You know, I, well, I, I shouldn't say that. I knew they would do it. The, the Budweiser team's the greatest. And, Did it run just like new? Uh, it ran perfect. Uh, it ran as good as it ran uh, when I tested the other day at 152, so I can't complain at all. Bernie, you relieved? Oh, <laughs> I think that was the final eight. Uh, uh, anyhow, yeah, we really are, and uh, we want to got a lot of fans here, and we want to race for them. The fans here on Mission Bay have two more preliminary heats, one more chance for each boat to get enough points to make the final. Now, if the final were to take place right now, here are your top six boats. And you'll notice on the bottom, Chip Hanauer, hoping to keep that string and the dream alive of a sixth straight, must somehow come up with some more points. He's on the bubble at this stage. Yesterday in the pits here in San Diego, everyone was treated to quite a sight. 
This is the Cellular One Unlimited Hydroplane, which went through a horrible accident two and a half months ago in Madison, Indiana. Its driver, Steve Reynolds, a fractured skull, but is back. My baby. You can see how much these drivers love their boats, even when things like this happen. July 5th, 1987, Madison, Indiana, when Reynolds was involved in by far the most horrifying accident in the history of this sport. What's amazing is the doctors say that you're about at the six month point and it's only two months after the accident. You're four months ahead of schedule in your recovery. Yeah, that's, that's a positive attitude for you. <laughs> <laughs> Many people have said too, that cockpit, uh, the canopy on it, it literally saved your life. It did, it really did. It really saved my life. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a firm believer in, in the canopy for unlimited racing. And I think that uh, every boat should have one. I think it should be mandatory on it. I know it's probably driving you crazy not driving today. Are you going to drive again, do you think? Oh, yeah. I'll be there next year, but it'll be a good five or six months before I'm ready. And I know it. Um, Even if, say, a uh, Jim Lucero or Crucci says, well, maybe, maybe not. No. If, if Jim Lucero says no, or Steve Woomer, the owner, says no, uh, then Steve Reynolds won't drive. You can always be a television commentator. <laughs> I thought about that, too. <laughs> <laughs> well, I know you have. <laughs> Good to have you here, Steve. Good to be here, buddy. Thanks. Steve Reynolds, in one capacity or another, I'm sure will remain in racing. Here's Ron Snyder getting ready for Heat 3A. Snyder is among the top six at this stage, as you see with 450 points. But there's the rundown with Woods, Cropfield, Evans, Snyder, and Hop. And here's the man who has to make all the tough decisions, Lee Shaneth, chief referee. And we've been told that he's informed the drivers that it's a little tricky out there in terms of wind. Again, five boats. We have only two more preliminaries, then the run for the gold and the money, the final for the gold cup. As you see, George Woods on the right. Here comes Ron Snyder for the start. And the Budweiser are already going by. Great start for Jim Cropfeld and the Budweiser, Steve. Actually, a great start by all three drivers, but the Budweiser's boat speed takes over right here. Jim Cropfeld had his nose right on the line. He's going for it again. One thing we've noticed about the turbine drivers, both Hanauer and Cropfeld and Scott Pierce, for that matter, staying way outside when they can to keep the boats. Speed. Look out, the Budweiser's gone over. Jim Cropfeld and the Miss Budweiser has blown over in the back chute, just coming out of the turn. Don, the boat is upside down, but remember, Jim is in an enclosed cockpit. He has oxygen. Hopefully, he's okay. Flares have been fired. The flags are out. The race obviously stop all the boats returning to the pits. Upside down. No. Hanauer back in the pits and everyone else just getting word of what has happened. Obviously safety first, even though these are all competitors. The boat, and with one of the divers, that should be Eric Sealow, the head paramedic for the Unlimited Racing Commission. He's going up now. He'll pull the hatch off. There it goes. That's the hatch in the bottom of the boat under the cockpit. He'll now pull the legs. There are loops on the race suit, Steve, on uh, Cropfeld as he pulls them out. There are his feet. One of the concerns with the canopy boats, how to get the driver out if it's upside down. The hatch was added to the bottom, it's being used right here. The crew, very concerned. Ronnie Brown, the crew chief, all they can do now is wait. The preliminary indications now coming in that Jim may be in good shape. We understand his vital signs are stable, and we can only hope for the best. Steve, let's go back to the accident. The second blowover for the Budweiser in 1987. And a hard one to explain, Don. The blowover is the worst accident in unlimited or, or any kind of hydroplane racing. It usually takes place at the high speed end of the chute. Jim has just come by the exit pin. Now he starts up. The boat does not correct. It gets a puff of air underneath, and he's gone. Now, the good part of this is, when you watch the boat land, the real deceleration is yet to come. Right here, the boat will actually land transom first, which means Jim was pressed back into the seat rather than thrown forward, and hopefully that's a good sign, and uh, we'll see that he may have come out of this okay. Meanwhile, it is still very quiet here at Mission Bay. Welcome back to San Diego. As you see, the Budweiser has been towed back to the pits. The immediate dilemma facing the crew is to get this boat right side up, which they will do with the use of a crane, but it's not an easy job. Todd Yarling and his wife Tanya watching on. 
The news in regards to Jim Kropfeld, the driver, is very good. He is going to be fine. Banged up his shins a little. His neck is a little sore, but he's going to be okay. From there, we moved on to the restart of Heat 3A. Of course, only four boats instead of five with the loss of the Budweiser. And Mr. Ron Snyder was the man who capitalized. The Miss Madison, the host of Miss Madison, went on to get to the victory, but it was the Oboy Alberto with George Woods in the lead until going into the last turn on lap number six. Engine problems, he stalled a bit, and that enabled Ron Snyder to come around to get the victory. So he picked up the 400 points, and then it was George Woods picking up 300, and both boats easily making it in to the final heat. The results. 850 for the day for Snyder. Woods at a solid 700. Jerry Hopp with 394, right on that bubble. And then Mitch Evans at 694. I want a new boat like everybody else got. <laughs> Look like your famous Ron Snyder flying start and then wait for the first place guy to slow down a little. Well, George has, George has got a little more than, than what I got today, and I don't understand it. Uh, Tri Cities. I was able to pull him, and you know, we didn't really get to run in, in Syracuse. But uh, Alberto's got their uh, act together today, and I don't know what their problem was, but if he wouldn't have died in the water there, I'd have never caught him. As Todd Yarling crawls in for Heat 3B, we hope to try a little something different. Over his left shoulder is a camera. We'll take you along for the ride, hopefully. There goes Jack Schaefer heading out for Heat 3B, his last go around before the final. Along with Scott Pierce and Chip Hanauer. Of the five drivers in this final preliminary heat, really from Hanauer on down, need points to get into the final heat. The sun continues to drop ever so low here on Mission Bay. This is the last preliminary run, and then we go for the gold. Five boats, here they come. Todd Yarling, right of your screen, absolutely wires the start. First place in clear water, going down the main straightaway. Where's the miller? There he is, Steve. The boat closest to you is Chip Hanauer in the Miller American, playing it safe, back a ways. Don, this is probably, well, undoubtedly, the most important heat of Chip Hanauer's year, probably one of the most important of his career. He has to score points here if he's going to have any chance of that sixth Gold Cup. He is sitting with 400 points right now. The leader on the left of the screen is Todd Yarling. There goes the Miller on the outside. Chip Hanauer again with 400 points. He's got to get some beans in his pocket or he won't be in the final. It's that simple. And a shot to win his sixth straight Gold Cup. What a shot. Three boats abreast going down the main chute in fourth place. That was Jack Schaefer out of Seattle. And again, the Miller on the outside. I think that's very smart driving by Chip Hanauer. He did not take any chances on the start. He knows he has boat speed on this field. He can go outside, stay out of trouble. On a two and a half mile course, he's running four miles, but he has the boat speed to do it. He is doing what Bill Muncy used to say, stay out in clear water and do what the boat is designed to do, go fast in clear water. Speed 120 miles per hour and a slight lead for Hanauer with the sun behind him as he goes into the turn, Steve. Running so wide, he makes it possible for the piston-powered boats to stay with him. And there you see one inside right now. Oh, look at that. Out. That's what's left of the Miss Bahia, who lost her wing in earlier heat. Now remember, very seldom has a turbine-powered unlimited hydroplane finished a heat here on Mission Bay in this salt water. A lot of drama left here, and you can bet the Chips crew is plenty worried right now back on the dock. You can hear Scott Pierce's boat, the Mr. Pringle, sputtering. That is a turbine engine, and that's what salt will do to it. But the Miller somehow being able to stay away from the spray and hold on the lead at the same time. Let's get a speed on the Miller American right around 124 miles per hour. A little quicker here on this particular lap, two and a half mile course. And look what's left of the Bahia. No wing, Todd Yarling in third place. Again, the Miller comes by sounding good, Don. If you've watched turbine boats run on this bay before, you're listening for that compressor stall. We've heard it so many, many times. So far, Chip's power plant is okay. That's the sound that we're talking about right there. It's called a compressor stall. And the Miller American, so far, no coughs, no spurts, and it's in first place. Now it's a matter of attrition. You see the U-80 struggling on the right of your screen. The U-22 and Todd Yarling moving into second place. This is his best showing so far in 1987 in an overall race day. He's having a great afternoon. You still cannot count out Todd Yarling, George Woods, Jack Schaefer, the other piston drivers. The expectation is that the turbine boats, like that one right there, probably will not be able to hold it together all day. 
Hanauer still looking for his first race victory in 1987. Wouldn't it be something if he went throughout seven races, finally the eighth one, that being the Gold Cup, to get his first victory of the year and keep that string going. There's Scott Pierce again in the Mr. Pringles, a winner in Detroit in 1987. Outstanding driver out of Seattle, and again, back to Jack Schaefer and the Kenny Toyota. That huge housing on top of the cowling on the Miller American, something you'll only see on salt water. It's tantamount to a huge filter cigarette keeping the salt and water out of the engine. When they go to Las Vegas next week, Don, they'll run a different cowling. And this particular team, the Jim Sedan team, has worked so well this year. The U-22 and Todd Yarling in second place. They're one of the leading piston boats. In fact, in national points, they are number one as far as piston engine powered hydroplanes. The leading national point getter, that's him now. Hanauer has done it. He's got the points he needs to get into the final and go for the gold. A sixth straight. 400. That's 800 for the day. And again, Todd Yarling on the inside battling Jack Schaefer. It'll be Yarling picking up 300. 600 for the day. He's in the final. And likewise for Jack Schaefer limping across the finish line. So of the five boats... Hanauer, Yarling, and Schaefer all safely into the final heat. The stage is now set for the big one. That's a big step and I know a relief. You're in the final heat. Yeah, we're in the final. And it, it, like I said, it's a long journey and another step's complete and see what happens in the final. If it runs just like it did right here, you're okay? Well, I don't know. You know, the salt is always looming and it's always dangerous. So, you know, I'll, I'll believe we can do it when we've done it. Six laps to go. Six laps to go. Mr. Yarling, you have made the final. How about that? Boy, that was great. It was. <laughs> and your fan club knows about it. Yeah, it was close there. Uh, one of those little gremlins caught us, and we knew we had a good running boat, but we didn't have a chance to run it. Now we, we finally proved it, and we're in there. We're going for the gold. Now the important factor is that anything can happen on salt water in a final heat. You got a great shot. Who knows? Oh, yeah. that's Well, we, we worked a lot of long hours to take advantage of it if it comes our way. And I know also that you you want to be, national points-wise, the top piston engine-powered boat, and you're right in there. Yeah, we, you know, that was a dream that we had <laughs> this year, and we've held it off for a long time, and hopefully we can hold it in two more races. A victory by Hanauer in the final would put him one step ahead of Gar Wood, who is the only one to win five straight. The final is next. Welcome back to the pits. As you see, they have been able to get to the Budweiser and get it right side up. Lots of damage, but the cockpit totally intact, and that's the key to the safety for these drivers. On Hanauer's mind right now, try to relax, try to get ready, and hope to make history in just a few minutes. Let's go back in history, 12 months. Detroit River, Detroit, Michigan. The Seattle native and Washington State University graduate wins his fifth straight gold cup on a river that he calls the Yankee Stadium of unlimited hydroplane racing. Chip and Frank, can we this get you just best. for a second? This is the best win. Lance ever. Morris, team manager. John, Chip, of course. Here, Fran Muncy, owner of the boat. John Walters, crew chief, coming in here. Chip, who is Garwood anyway? Uh, I don't know. I never met the man, but uh, he sure gave us something to shoot at. It seems so appropriate that you get the fifth one here in Detroit after getting the first one in Detroit. I know. Right. This my. I don't deserve to have a life like this. I mean, I, I, I never dreamed it could be like that. I mean... I, I'm speechless, and I just have nothing to do but thank all these people who just gave so much under the worst circumstances, never said die, I'm just really happy. Emotion then took him over, but that is ancient history in a way as Chip Hanauer looks to 1987. Some of the other drivers competing in the final, Ron Schneider, who's had a good day, never count him out, especially in a final heat. Jack Schaefer Jr., he earned the points to make it into the final for the Kenny Toyota Volvo. Also, George Woods, the rookie, in his first ever Gold Cup. Likewise for Mitch Evans, driving for Ed Cooper, his first Gold Cup. Not Todd Yarling, he finished third back in 85. And right now, the Oboy Alberto crew looks like they're behind a bit. May have been delayed getting the boat out there. They've got to hurry, as the Miller American is already heading out.
sun ever so low. Here come five boats. And it looks at this point, the Oboy Alberto George Woods is not there. Not on a plane at the one-minute gun. Here they come. Again, Todd Yarling with a great start. Again, all alone in the middle of the field. Down the main straightaway in first place. Miller American with Chip Hanauer back away. Again, trying to find clear air and clean water. Steve? If Todd Yarling is ever going to win a Gold Cup, Don, this is his chance right here. The salt water, a bit of an equalizer. It gives him advantage over the turbine boats. He made a tremendous start. He's the first boat to turn left, and there he goes up the backstretch. A young man from Hanover, Indiana. You can bet he's excited right now. Ron Snyder out of Madison, Indiana in second place. You can see, oh, on the outside, here comes Chip Hanauer. He's moved into second place, staying out in the clear air. Fans in the pits, fans all around Cien, San Diego. Heavens, the country for that matter. And now Hanauer's taking first place here on lap number one, going into the second turn, Steve. Chip has the lead, at least for the moment. But remember, Todd Yarling on the inside, Don, running a much shorter race course. Chip is way outside. And while Todd Yarling has performed so well today, his boat, he has got attrition in his favor. Again, there's salt out there, and Hanauer has a lot of laps to go before he's won his sixth straight Gold Cup. Coming down, here comes the Kenny Toyota, Jack Schaefer. Look at this. Oh, my goodness, the Miss Madison and Rod Steiner. I hope he's all right. Looks like he's okay, but there's oil all over the boat. He's done for the day as the Miller goes on to turn number one. It is remarkable the way this boat is performing. We have never seen a turbine run like this on saltwater, Don, in Miami and San Diego. It simply hasn't happened. And I know Chip is going to want to give a lot of credit to the Stewart and Stevenson guys up from Houston helping with the turbines. He's already got a world record tucked in his pocket at better than 155 miles per hour on a two-and-a-half-mile course. There goes Jerry Hopp moving up into the field, into the first turn. But the Miller American, it has been an incredible weekend for this team. They have struggled so much throughout the year trying to catch Jim Cropfeld and the Budweiser team. And it looks like this might, might be their day. But again, he's got at least three laps to go. His average speed still right around 129 to 130 miles per hour on this saltwater course. Mid-season, people looked at Chip's boat and said it's unfortunate. His chance for a sixth Gold Cup out the window. No way they can come close this year, the way the boat's performing. And here he is, a couple of laps away from what was seemingly impossible just a month or two ago. For over 65 years, that's 65 years, no one has come close to winning five Gold Cups. That's Charlie Lyford, one of the crew members for the Miller. Hanauer won his fifth straight last year. And now, only Gar Wood is the man standing next to him. He won his fifth back in 1921. He could win his sixth today. That being Hanauer in the Miller American. You could cut the tension right now with a knife among those crew members, Don. Their driver has done his job. Chip has put the boat out front. They know that if they have done their job and it stays together, the impossible dream becomes possible. The best that the U-22 Todd Yarling has ever done in a Gold Cup is third place in Seattle back in 1985. He's got a shot at certainly bettering that. And who knows what might happen to Hanauer before this one's over with. He could still pick up a Gold Cup himself. And my, he would be the pride of Madison, Indiana if he could do that. Yarling in second place. With a lap to go, Todd Yarling, if you told him a couple of weeks ago he'd finish second in the Gold Cup, he'd have been very excited, Don. This will be a big moment for that young man. And this man is about a lap away. Check that. Make it a half a lap away. The crew anticipating it now. Chip Hanauer, after struggling throughout 1987, a national champion in 85, missing the national championship by 31 points in 1986, coming down the main straightaway. Move over, Gar Wood, who won five straight back in 1921. The winner of his sixth straight Gold Cup, Chip Hanauer in the Middle American. Johnny Walters, some of the crew members, Mike Campbell, all the boys enjoying what they certainly deserve. The victory is Todd Yarling comes in second place. And in third place, Jerry Hopp for Garrett Turbo. Here's how it'll go into the record book. Hanauer out of a possible 1,600 points gets 1,200. Yarling with 900. Jerry Hopp, Mitch Evans, Ron Snyder, and on down the line. Let's go down to the winner's circle. Your guys did everything right, but you got some breaks. When you think back on all the things that went right, this was an incredible day. Well, we have not had any breaks all year, and we got some breaks, but the guys brought the boat here, and they made the boat the fastest unlimited hydroplane in the history of the sport on Saturday. And on Friday, we made it the only boat to win four straight Gold Cups, and we're the only team to win six straight Gold Cups, and ain't nobody can take that away from us, ever. <laughs> Fran, you guys really pulled this one out of the hat. Oh, we sure did. I'm just so happy, and thanks to the crew and, and Chip. Just uh, thanks to everyone. <laughs> Before 
every race, I make a little promise to myself. I say, Danny, don't go too fast, but don't go too slow. And when in doubt, hit the gas. is proud to sponsor Danny Sullivan driving the Miller American. Hotel accommodations for Runaway Entertainment were provided by the Catamaran Resort Hotel, located on beautiful Michigan. This has been the Miller APBA Gold Cup, brought to you by Miller Beer, made the American...